Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to talk about one of the important feature in Databricks Delta development, which is change data feed. In order to understand change data feed, we need to understand what is change data capture. Change data capture is one of the popular data loading mechanism used in most of the traditional databases and data warehousing solutions. With the help of this change data capture, we can identify only the modified, deleted or newly inserted records to our source table since our previous data extraction. Then we can process only those modified data. So this is going to improve the efficiency of the data loading. And this same requirement is very common for Databricks development uh, scenarios as well. So mostly we are going with the very popular approach which is watermark concept. In watermark table approach, we have to create a control table. In the control table, we are going to make entry of the previously loaded, uh, you know, maximum timestamp. So each and every time, whenever we are going to run the pipeline, it will first hit the control table. It will understand what was the previously extracted maximum uh, timestamp. And based on that, it will filter out from the source table based on that timestamp. And it will process only those new records or modified records. So that is watermark concept and only to process incremental data load Databricks is uh, providing another efficient feature which, uh, which is auto loader but auto loader that is suitable only for up end or incremental data loading that is not handling modified or deleted records so Databricks has come up with new approach which is change data feed with the help of this we can develop uh, solutions which is equivalent of uh, change data capture in most of the databases or data warehousing solutions. And what is this CDF? CDF is basically tracking row level changes. It could be delete, insert, update. And it is uh, tracking row level changes that is getting applied to the delta table through the concept of versioning. So by enabling CDF for a particular delta table, we can process only the uh, changed data since our previous uh, execution. This is suitable for batch and streaming use cases, right? So whenever we are going to enable this change data capture or change data feed in a particular uh, delta table, it is going to create internally another table or we can consider that as a view. So that is going to maintain additional columns, which is uh, change type, commit version and commit timestamp. Coming to change type, it is going to tell, you know, for each and every record, it is going to create proper value. The change type could be insert. In case we are the record got inserted newly, then it is going to keep the change type as insert. Or for delete, it will be delete. And for update, it is going to create two version. One is the previous version before the update, which is called update pre-image. And after making the update, it is going to create a new version, which which the type would be update post image, right? And it is also going to maintain the version for each and every uh, changes we are making to the source table. And also it is going to record the timestamp uh, of that particular change. So with the help of these additional columns, we will be able to identify uh, the changed, deleted or newly inserted records. And based on that, we can process only those records. Right. Coming to syntax, in case we have to enable this feature to our delta table while creation, then we have to use the syntax create table. We have to give a table name. If needed, we can uh, specify different options. And coming to this feature, we have to specify table properties delta dot enable change data feed. That should be true. By default, it would be false. So in case we want to use this feature for our table at the table creation, then we have to use this particular syntax. And in case we have already created a table, delta table but we haven't enabled that feature later now we have to enable then we can go with alter statement so in the alter statement we have to specify alter table we have to specify the table name then we have to put set properties and this property should be true and this is going to track the changes only after the enable um, after this enable so whatever the version or changes happened before this enable it's not going to consider those things right and in case we have enabled this feature for our delta table, how we can see those changes? For that, Databricks is providing 
the inbuilt feature which is table underscore changes we can consider as this as um, you know traditional stored procedure you know which is provided by most of the databases or we can call we can consider this as a built-in user user defined function within this uh, databricks development so for this we have to pass input parameter of table name and also we have to mention starting version you know from which version we want to see the uh, records and the end version that is optional if we don't give end version then it is going to give all the records till the latest end version this is how we can um, enable this feature and uh, view the changed records in uh, databricks development right coming to use cases in uh, databricks delta development mostly we are using medallion architecture where in the bronze layer we are going to bring the raw data as it is so this is not more suitable and this change data feed that is more suitable for silver and gold tables um, because in the silver and gold you know we can identify only the modified data changed data then we can process and another use case is materialized view in materialized view most of the cases you now we are performing certain aggregation with the help of a spark sql so those aggregations can be performed only for changed records instead of you know re uh, calcula calculating uh, the aggregation for entire table we can go only for changed data so this is more suitable for materialized views as well and the next uh, use case is audit trail table uh, in audit trail table basically we can understand you know what are the uh, changes happened at what time happened and uh, what was the previous value you know what kind of changes we have applied uh, its update or which value we updated you know what kind of records got deleted or inserted you know we can uh, get um, you know different information that is more suitable for auditing purpose and uh, the last use case is transmit changes which means as soon as we are uh, witnessing changes in our source and we have to pass those changes to downstream applications like kafka uh, rdbms then we can go with um, uh, this feature so these are the different use cases let's get started with the demo i have logged into my databricks environment my cluster is up and running and i have created a sample notebook for this demo and uh, in this demo i'm going to create two tables one is uh, silver table which is sitting in silver uh, layer another one is cold table which is sitting in cold layer so in this uh, demo i'm going to enable cdc for my silver table and i'm going to make changes to that uh, silver table and i will show how we can process those changed records efficiently to our target which is cold table right to start with this demo first i'm going to create a data frame for this silver table this is going to contain uh, information related to product and sales so the table is created now and uh, let me see my table here we can see it's con it's containing country product stock and sales and i'm going to create my cold table which is going to have aggregated information for this um, silver table i'm going to calculate the sales rate based on the sales and stock information so for that i have created another uh, data frame i'm uh, calculating the sales rate as an additional column then i am dropping the unwanted columns stock and sales then finally i am creating the cold table so let me execute so you can see the data for reference table uh, creation is completed and i am executing select statement to see the output here we are having country product and sales rate so this is one of the aggregated target table now what i want to do is i want to enable cdc for my source table and i will make changes like insert delete and update then i am going to show you how to capture those modified records and how to process that to our cold or target table right as i mentioned in the uh, powerpoint in order to enable change data feed for existing table we have to use the syntax alter table so here silver table is my table name and i am uh, enabling the property delta dot enable change data feed which is true let me execute so now it's enabled so previously i created the table that is going to be version number 0 and i am altering uh, the property so this is going to be next version to the table so the previous version the creation of the table that is not going to be part of this uh, change data feed because we are enabling recently and this change data feed this is applicable starting from this operation only right now i am going to perform data modification to my source table so for that i am going to create a new record which is australia 
product E and it is having uh, stock and sales. Right. Now, I am going to insert in this record into my silver table. So, for that I am using PySpark syntax. Right. Let me execute. And second change is I am going to modify one of the record which is country USA and product product A. For that currently the stock is 200. If you look at our source table we don't have any record for Australia. I have added Australia and for USA we are having stock 1000 but I am going to make it to 1200. Right. Let me execute this update statement. So basically it is going to create two entry. One is what is the uh, state of pre-image which means before updating what was the state. Another one is update post image which means what uh, change got applied after this uh, execution. Right. So I have performed insert and also update. Now third operation which is delete. I am going to delete the record for UK. So let me execute this operation as well. Now I have performed data modifications to my source table. Now let me check the data in my source table which is silver table. Here we can see Australia got added at the same time UK got removed and for USA the stock value got changed from 1000 to 1200. Right now how I can recognize these changes to my table. So for that first of all I want to show you know what is the uh, history we can see for this particular silver table. So for si this silver table, so here the initial versions we can see for creation of the table and version 2 onwards I am in, uh, changing the table property which is nothing but enabling change data feed. Then after that I am performing insert which is right operation according to this uh, history, uh, uh, delta lake history and after that I am performing update and also I am performing delete. This is usual um, verification of our history of the table. Right now coming to this uh, change data feature, change data feed, now we have to see the changes with the help of this uh, built in option table changes. Inside we need to give uh, the source uh, table you know for which we want to see the changes. In our case it's a silver table and I'm giving starting version as 1. Um, so here basically we are enabling uh, starting version 2. You know we are uh, uh, enabling change data feed starting from version 2. So we need to give starting version as 2 and the ending version that is optional. I don't want to give. Let me uh, see the changes. Here we can see the commit version. This is 3. Basically this uh, table changes. It is going to give the information about data modification. Even though in the version number 2 we have enabled this change data feature with the help of alter uh, table statement because that is not a data change. That is the reason that is not captured here. So starting from version 3 we can see you know, this is uh, inserted. So here we can see change type and what is the commit version and what time the uh, commit uh, happened. This information we can see and coming to update for USA record. Here we can see two records. One is update pre-image, another one is update post-image. So before uh, the update the value was 1000. After the update it is 1200. And uh, the next uh, change which is deletion. The record you know, for UK country we have deleted. So this is how we can uh, see the changes that happened to a particular table over the time. Right. Now I want to capture and process only these changes. So what I can do? I can use uh, merge statement. But before that, I want to show here. I have shown you know how we can change the uh, how we can see the changes with the help of uh, Spark SQL. The same operation can be done with the help of PySpark. For PySpark, we have to use a Spark Reader, and here we have to give uh, option read change data. This is important, and we have to give starting version, and also we can specify ending version. I didn't do that in this exercise, and we have to mention the table name. Let me uh, execute this comment, and we can uh, see the same result uh, as above. Here we can see, right? And uh, now I want to propagate these changes to my target table. So for that, I want to create one temporary table to hold only these changed data. This is uh, optional uh, even we can uh, do it directly to our target table but uh, just to know I wanted to split this logic into multiple uh, pieces so that you can understand in a better way. So here I am creating a temporary view where I am going to capture only the changed records but at the same time I am not going to consider 
the pre-image of update statement because that is not needed. It was the previous version of uh, update. So that is not needed. So in my table changes, I want to ignore this change type of update pre-image. So I'm going to consider all other changes. So I have written a Spark SQL to create a temporary view. Right now, uh, I'm going to see the result of this uh, temporary view. This is going to show only the changed record. Here we can see it's quite similar to our previous output. But here we have been considered the update pre-image because that is not needed anymore for our processing. Right now, I'm going to apply merge statement. In the merge statement, you know, based on my uh, this change uh, data feed table, I'm going to match based on the country and product. And in case it's matched, matched means existing record. And also the existing record could be deleted also. So in order to identify that update statement, I have to put, you know, it should be matched and also the change type should be update post image. If that is the case, then I am updating the sales rate based on this formula sales divided by stock and it's update, it's matched, which means existing record. But at the same time, change type is delete. Then I'm, I want to delete that record from my target. So here I'm giving delete statement. And in case it's not matched, which means this is the brand new record. So I have to process that for that I am using uh, insert statement. So within the insert uh, statement, I'm uh, giving my logic. So this is uh, how we can process change the record with the help of merge statement. So let me execute this one and we can see the output in our uh, uh, target table, which is cold underscore table. Now it's getting executed. Now it's done. Let me see my target table. Now here we can see the data for Australia, which was not there earlier. And also the um, data for UK got uh, removed because it was deleted and also for USA, you know, it got changed. Right. This is how we can uh, use change data feature efficiently to process uh, this uh, change data capture uh, requirement for our uh, Delta Lake development. I hope you understood the concept. I hope you like this video. If you like the content of this video, please like and comment to the channel and also subscribe this channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button to get the latest update on uh, Databricks development. Thank you.